A pleasant greetings to all. In this video, I am going to explain the introduction to power system analysis. Being a clean and versatile form of energy and easy to transmit over a very large distance, electrical power is the most preferable form of energy. Electricity is the vital input for economic and social development in our society. Besides its importance in the growth of the country's economy, it plays a major role in the life of a common man and has direct impact on the quality of life. Its demand has been growing faster than many other forms of energy. The demand for electricity in India has been growing at an average growth of 7 to 8% and demand supply has widened over the years. Providing reliable and inexpensive electricity is essential for economic development of the country and better standard of living of the people. Next I am going to explain the structure of the power system. See the power system consists of three basic components namely generation, transmission and distribution. The transmission line connects the generating stations distribution systems and other power systems while the distribution system connect loads to transmission line and substation. Substation perform transformation and switching function by means of transformer and circuit breaker. Transformation by transformer and switching function by circuit breaker. Generation, transmission and distribution system are connected in the power system so as to, to form a coherent power system structure for optimal operation. The structure of the power system is shown in figure A. The power system power generated by various types of generating plants such as hydro, thermal, coal, gas, oil, fire, nuclear power plants and wind, solar, thermal are the renewable power plants. These are the non-renewable sources of energy. The generation voltage is generally in the range of 11 kV to 25 kV. To transmit large quantum of power over large distance with low transmission losses, the generated voltage is stepped up to high or extra high or ultra high voltages in the transmission system. See here. What is the equation of the power? The power is equal to I square R loss. I square R. Okay. The current is increased so that the power loss, or power loss also increase in a power system. But the voltage is increased mean simultaneously the current will be reduced. So if you increase the voltage to a very high voltage at that time the current will be reduced. So if the current is reduced, automatically the power loss is reduced. Okay. See, this is the structure of the power system. In this power system, first we are having the generator, produce the generator voltage such as 11, 25, 33 kV. Then transformation is made by transformer. Transformer which is used to rise the voltage to a high voltage. The reason is in order to reduce the current in a current so that the voltages rise to a very higher voltage. Then this transmission level is known as per primary transmission to other pole members also and then directly it is given to the very large consumers. So very large consumers benefited directly from the transmission level or primary transmission. And then next level generation, these generators are connected to the transformers and then this is known as sub transmission level. In the sub transmission level again the voltage is reduced to some other value and then this is given to another transformer and going to a primary distribution level and this is the secondary distribution. And then the secondary distribution is directly given to the, the voltage given to the small consumers, directly the primary distribution to medium consumers and the secondary transmission to the large consumers. Small generators meeting 
local load may however be connected to the sub transmission system because in order to meet the local uh, load needs the transmission system may not only handle large block of power but also interconnects all the generating stations and power system forming a grid network very large consumers may avail power directly from the transmission level or primary transmission transfer of energy to other pool members may also take place in the primary transmission the power can be routed in any direction on the various links of the transmission system in the way to achieve overall economy the sub transmission circuit distributes power to a number of distributed substations in certain area to voltage varies between 66 kV and 110 bar 132 kV that is the primary distribution and receives the power directly from the generating station or bulk power station directly from the generating station or bulk power station large consumers are served directly from this station okay this is secondary transmission when the system grows and load density increases transmission level may become sub transmission level and next distribution circuit the distribution circuits at the lower most voltage level primary or feed voltage level 33 to 11 kv that is the primary distribution secondary distribution level voltage is 230 or 415 volt 230 is a single phase supply and 415 is the three phase supply they supply power to the medium industrial consumer or small domestic agricultural commercial or small industry consumers at the secondary level distribution engineering covers variety of services like overhead line underground cable metering switching and protection while the transmission level has the loop structure the sub transmission and distribution level is usually in the radial mode of operation so these are the modern power system structure next i am going to explain the one line diagram three phase balance system is represented by a single phase in accordance with the per phase analysis in order to make a uh, calculation in a simple manner we have to use the per phase analysis the components of the power system are indicated by symbols for example the transmission line is represented by a single line such a simplified diagram of a power system is known as single line diagram or one line diagram here see the power system big big components are there like generator so if you draw the same uh, components in a paper so our analysis purpose it is too difficult or too complicated so in order to avoid this we have to use a symbol for such a component the one line diagram gives information about the system in concise form continuation the general electrical power system are represented by the one line diagram or single line diagram a single line diagram of a power system shows the main connections and arrangement of components in a simplified manner pictorial representation of a entire power system form generating into the consumer premises is known as single line diagram so it starts from the generating end and ends at the consumer premises and next i am going to explain the symbols used in the single line diagram the symbols are the first this is symbol used in the generator the rotating machine or armature that is circle then bus here this is a symbol for bus then this is a symbol for two winding transformer and this is a symbol for three winding power transformer and this is the delta connector three phase three phase three wire y connector three phase neutral is not grounded or ungrounded and here y connection with neutral is grounded then here this is the transmission line and this is the static load then circuit breaker this is a circuit breaker this is a disconnect then fuse capacitor current transformer potential transformer and this symbol used for lightning arrestor the previously we have seen 30 mva 11 kV then 33 mva 40 m megawatt in this way the large values of power and large values of voltage are used in the 
but if you do uh, if you use such a large value the comp the calculations are more complicated and in order to uh, simplify the calculation we have to use the per unit quantities the solution of power system having different voltage levels and power capabilities recurs norm normative values that is per unit value which are easily amenable for the computer calculation further where equipment rating are known not known it can be easily assumed because per unit values lie in the narrow range the basic power system parameters are voltage current apparent power and the impedance these four are the basic power system parameters here voltage and current are independent quantities and apparent power and impedance are the dependent quantities because apparent power and impedance are calculated from voltage and current of these four two are independent while the remaining two are dependent and can be computed from the independent quantities usually voltages in kv apparent power mva are selected as a base quantities the per unit quantity is what the per unit quantity is the ratio of actual value to the base value always expressed in decimal the value start from 0 point something and end set the value 1 so maximum value is 1 for the per unit so the calculation is also a symbol sometimes the ratio is expressed in percent which is 100 times the per unit value the per unit representation is better than the percent value because multiplication of say two per unit values give correct per unit value of the combination but the multiplication of two present value gives the incorrect present value see if you multiply the per unit value is given that is 0 0.112 is multiplied with 0 0.301 so if you multiply both it will give another one value that is also directly we get the per unit value but if you convert this in the present value means multiply this is 100 that is again multiplied with 100 30 point something we get the four digits value so four digit value how we can get this is a wrong answer four digit value is a wrong answer so how we get the actual value by dividing it with 100 then only we get the actual value so this is a problem in the present value Next, per unit quantities in the single phase system. See, for a chosen base value that is kilo volt and base apparent power MVA in single phase system, we are going to calculate the per unit power, per unit voltage, per unit current and per unit impedance. First, per unit power. So, per unit power is actual MVA divided by base MVA. Already have told the per unit value is calculated from the actual to the base what is per unit voltage actual kv divided by base kv what is base current how we can calculate the base current base current is calculated from the power formula p is equal to v into i so what is the value i i is equal to p divided by v so what is p p in mva and what is V? V in KV. So if we multiply, if we divide both, we get the kilo ampere. So base current in K, kilo ampere. And then actual current. How to calculate the actual current? The same way actual MVA divided by actual KV in kilo ampere. Then how to calculate the per unit current? So per unit current is actual current divided by base current. So what is the actual current? Actual current is base MVA. So, base MVA divided by what? Base KV. The whole divided by, this is the, sorry, per unit is actual by base, no. So, this is in the denominator, numerator, actual MVA divided by base, sorry, actual KV. Just you have to invert the value. So, actual MVA divided by actual KV or KVA, KV into base KV divided by base MVA. Just invert the value. Base MVA. 
So what is actual MBA divided by base MBA? The actual MBA divided by base MBA is very unit MBA. And what is actual by this come to the denominator? So actual KV divided by base KV that gives the value per unit KV. And next I am going to calculate the per unit impedance. So power is formula is V into I. Another one formula for power is if you put V is equal to uh, V is equal to IR we get the power value P is equal to I square into here AC is used I square into impedance. Another one formula for power is there P is equal to I is equal to V by R no. So V square by R. From this we get V square by R here V square divided by EZ. So from this what is EZ? EZ is equal to P divided by sorry EZ square divided by P. EZ square divided by sorry V square divided by P. Okay so EZ is equal to base KV square instead of V base KV square and what is P base MBA. So base KV square divided by base MBA that gives the base impedance or another one formula is base KV divided by base current also gives the same base impedance value. So what is per unit impedance? Actual impedance divided by base impedance. Already we got the answer for base impedance. So actual impedance in the base MVA divided by base KV square. Okay, okay. Thank you. And I will continue the remaining portion in the next video. Thank you. Have a nice, nice day.